My name is Anthony Allen, welcome here to my YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how you can start your very own 360 video aka virtual reality video within Final Cut Pro 10. It's going to be a good one, it's going to be fun, stay tuned because it's coming up next. Yo, let's join forces, hit the subscribe button. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start off and start editing your very own 360 virtual reality video within Final Cut Pro 10. It's going to be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Here it is. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, of course, is to start your project off. And that's going to be one of the main focuses of this video here today. In order to do that, you go to File, and New, and Library. Just like you would any usual project within Final Cut. Now you want to give it a save location. In my case, I'm going to use the downloads, and I'm not going to call this 360 because my number keys aren't working at the moment because uh, I've got the uh, butterfly key effect. Um, I know how to fix it, and we might be making a video about that as well. Um, but we're actually going to call this the 360. That has now created my library file. Now we have to create the actual project. I'm just going to get rid of the effects panel for now because we don't need it just yet. And then we're going to click on new project. Here is where the magic happens. So at this point we need to create our 360 project file. Uh, first you want to give it a name. So in our case we're just going to call it version 1. Don't know why I'm selecting so many numbers when my number keys aren't actually working because of the butterfly key effect but hey ho. You know, we just like to challenge ourselves a little bit. Now, there's two different things you can do. If you already have 360 video and it is suitable for editing, you can go for your automatic settings. If you've tried this, you've imported the 360 video and you can't edit the 360 video and you export and it comes out flat, then what you would do is the alternative. And this is to go into this setting here where it's got your aspect ratio and then you want to go down to 360. Now there are two versions of 360 video there is monoscopic, monos, monoscopic and there is also stereoscopic. For the purpose of this video we are going to use monoscopic meaning there is one iris looking out in a 360 video. If you want two irises, like a virtual reality video, then you would actually choose stereoscopic. But for the purpose of ours, we're going to use monoscopic, because you'll be looking through one lens being a TV screen, if you're, if you're watching on a console or an Apple TV, or a laptop or desktop if you're watching on a laptop or computer, and or, of course, if you're using a mobile or an iPad to watch your 360 video, then you would choose monoscopic. If you're using goggles or anything like that, then you would choose stereoscopic. That's just my recommendation. So now we're going to choose monoscopic. You can then see the resolution of the video. If you know the resolution of the 360 video that you're using, uh, in our case, we don't need to use an external video. I'm going to show you how to use a texture so you can create your very own 360 video from that texture. Uh, so you don't need to have filmed any 360 video in order to complete this, but I will show you both anyway. So we're going to mix uh, both a 360 video that has been filmed, like for example, uh, Google Earth, imagine Google Earth but a video and it's in a scene uh, that is basically what we're doing here where you can scroll around and have a look in a 360 degree angle while the video plays out that's basically what we're doing um, or just a flat texture of a colour where you can scroll around and you can place things within that texture it's going to make a lot more sense the more you watch this video so of course you can choose your aspect ratio here you can have a 360 by 4 uh, sorry not 360 my glasses were off the screen there <laughs> you can have a 380 by 40 but you can have a 380 40 by 1920 and then you can select your frame rate uh, for most youtube videos at the moment of me filming this video, uh, most YouTube videos are at 29.97 frame rate. Uh, you can pump it up to 30 
uh, but there's not much need on YouTube at the moment for that. I mean, YouTube's constantly upgrading and improving. Uh, and 60 frames per second is going to be ultra sharp. Uh, and most of my YouTube uh, gaming videos are at 60 frames per second or higher. Uh, that's for gaming videos, though, so it's very different. In the terms of this video, I'm going to actually go for 29.9p. Right, so we have our uh, event being created. We have our aspect ratio, of course. You can actually bump this up slightly a little bit more uh, to uh, 4096 by 2048 uh, resolution. Um, it's just a case of playing around with it. If you're using a specific video that you filmed, a 360 video, then you want to go into the properties of that video to see what the resolution of that video is. And that should be the one that you choose. Or if you don't know how to do that, you would select the use automatic setting. So in our case, what we're going to do now is we're going to click OK. And that will open up our 360 video. So right now, at this current point in time, this is a 360 project. But there is something missing. There is something else that we need before we start importing. And that is, if you go to the view, you can also go to 360 viewer. Now that's absolutely brilliant, but it's actually t it's taking up a little bit of the workspace right now. So there's not everything's not being displayed that we need from the 360 viewer and the usual preview window. So we need to get rid of something. So we need to get rid of either the inspector or the browser or both. Um, so in this case, because we're going to be using the drag and drop method of importing, uh, we're going to get rid of both. If you would like to learn more about importing, I have videos on my channel that you can check out as well. And that will definitely help you in, in terms of importing your media into Final Cut Pro 10, aka FCPX. So the next stage that we're going to do is we're going to click the button at the top right hand corner here, which will take away our browser. And then we're going to do the same for the inspector. Now I mentioned that you don't have had to have filmed a 360 video in order to create 360 video within Final Cut Pro 10. And that is because there are 360 textures already within Final Cut Pro 10. The way you would find these is, doo -doo 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 -doo, we need to open up the browser again, uh, is in the browser and it should be in your generators. So we're going to go and look for that now. You also have 360 titles because Final Cut Pro 10 has updated. So if you have the latest version of Final Cut Pro 10, our version is at the moment 10.48 is our version of Final Cut Pro 10 at the moment. So if you have that version, you will have this available. So you have 360 titles that you can add into your video. You also have, if we go into our generators, 360 color solid and 360 gradient. So it doesn't have to be one solid color. You can actually have a gradient as well. I'm pretty sure there will be more added to Final Cut Pro 10, but only time will tell if there's going to be more 360 textures added to the software. So in our terms, what we're going to do now is we're going to drag in a gradient. Just so you can see the difference between each viewer. Now, at the moment, this is slightly cut off screen. Um, so we're going to push the preview window slightly a bit more because we don't need a lot of our browser at the moment. We're only scrolling through looking for certain things. Uh, then we're going to go into our titles and we're going to find a 360 title. So for example, rotate here. And we're going to drag that on top. Now, the way that you can tell that the texture is a 360 texture is if you look next to the media source, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it a little bit closer. You can see that there is this icon here. That is the 360 icon within Final Cut Pro 10. It's also here on the preview window. And that is how you reorientate where your viewer is looking. So if you want a starting position or you want to keyframe the position of the 360 video for the viewer, then that is how you would do that. And we'll get into that shortly as well. It's going to be really useful for those of you who want to create a 360 video that moves for the viewer, but also gives the ability for the viewer to turn 
the camera and pan the camera around while they're watching your video. So there are two different versions of 360 video that you're learning here today. There is one that can actually move for the viewer around the scene and there is the other where the viewer can control where they are looking within the 360 degree scene. So in our case we're just going to start with a starting position. So here we already have our media already in the timeline. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a 360 video from outside of Final Cut Pro 10 using the drag and drop method. So I'm going to exit full screen mode. I'm going to push this along slightly. And you can see that I have some 360 uh, footage here that I already have filmed. I'm just going to zoom slightly out of my timeline so I can see where I'm dragging this in. I'm going to pull this texture a little bit further, uh, pull the duration down. And now I'm going to look for the image that I want to use. Now it's very important to understand that once you've exported the 360 degree video, uh, that will be flat once you import it back into Final Cut. For example, I created a 360 demo here. It will be completely flat and not 360 and it will look quite strange when you're not viewing it through a player such as YouTube. So until it's uploaded to a player that allows you to view 360 video or you're watching your video through a player that allows you to use 360 video, it will look completely flat. Let me show you an example. So if I click on this 360 video demo here. Let's enlarge it slightly. You have this very strange looking flat video where the curves on how you would turn the camera are actually flat. So you can see the entire 360 in a flat, a flattened image. And if we press play. Hi there Albert, this is Anthony Allen and I'll just be walking you through this really cool sample video that I've made for you with this 360 video. So you can see there that the image is completely flat. The, the sound quality was actually terrible as well. So I apologize for that. Uh, where you can also not move around. It's, it's completely flat because it's not being viewed through the correct viewer. So now at this point, what we're going to do is we're just going to use the drag and drop method to drag a video into the timeline. Oh, also before we do that, just like to mention as well that once you've exported that, it can only then be viewed. So in order to edit that 360 video that has already been exported from Final Cut Pro 10, you, you kind of lose the ability at the moment. So if you drag that back into the timeline in order to edit it as a 360 video, it won't edit as a 360 video. So the videos that can be edited as a 360 video are the ones that have, be, have came directly from a 360 camera. For example, the Google Earth camera that goes around the whole world filming the world. If that was a video camera, that would be a 360 camera footage that you can use within the software. If you try to use a edited, exported uh, 360 video from Final Cut, it won't allow you to do so and it will come out flat even after you're viewing it through a 360 viewer or a viewer that has a three a player that has a 360 ability for example youtube and the youtube player hopefully that made sense to a lot of you out there i tried to break that down as much as possible um it's through experimenting and finding things out that i've actually found that out myself because i've edited 360 video exported it and viewed it through youtube and done a few tests as well uh, so here to help so at this point this video here has been exported directly from a 360 camera. I'm going to drag this directly into the timeline. The reason why when you export the video uh, as a 360 video that it cannot be edited as a 360 video is because the properties of the video have changed. If anybody knows how to reverse this change or uh, you know allow it to be able to then be edited through Final Cut Pro 10, uh, after it's been exported from Final Cut Pro 10, then do let us know in the comment section down below. So now we've dragged and dropped our 360 video into the timeline and we also have our 360 viewer here in the timeline also. Um, it's a little bit jarring that the preview is slightly off screen. Um, let's, just let's just move that over so we can see more of that. Because the video is a fairly large video, it's, I'm trying to fit it all in as much as possible. Uh, maybe I can change the percentage of how much is being viewed and that should, there we go, that, that works a lot better. 
that works a lot better. So now we have both images on the screen. So we have our 360 viewer here and we have the flat version, which is in the normal preview window that you normally have within Final Cut Pro 10. Now, obviously you have to distribute your workspace so that you can have enough on screen in order to see what you're doing. But here is where the 360 magic will take place. So, of course, there are a few different automatic color correction and audio enhancements that you can make uh, that is automatically placed down below. I'm not sure why. Um, I think it's just, you know, it's a new type of player and, and the developers are just thinking, you know, maybe a lot of 360 edited video makers want to use the color correction um, instead of going up to the edit and doing the color correction through there. Uh, we also have, if you hover your mouse over the top of it, you can have the choose to retiming your clips and so forth. So that is also a modifier as well. So you normally go up into modifier. And you normally retime through these these um, these settings here and balance the color. So it's just giving you your modify settings for your 360 video. Maybe because it has to be done in the 360 player and not within the timeline, which would make sense. And I think that's the reason why that's being done. Um, also remember that you have to export your video before you finish up. Um, sorry, not export. Also remember that you have to render your video before you finish editing at all. So 360 titles work similarly to the 2D, 3D texture titles that we have in a normal project. You can place them on screen, you can also change the text and so forth. And of course you can change the font and all those sort of things as well to the title and what it says. For example, if I get this to say Anthony, it will say Anthony and it will also be on screen. Now, the last thing that I want to show you before we finish up here with this video, as it's just a brief tutorial into uh, 360 video and getting started with 360 video, um, is the orientation. So if we're here in this window here, and then we click on the texture, and then we go into the orient, we can then move on screen as to where the viewer is looking as a starting position or in that position because it does make a keyframe. Um, so if I go to the start of the frame here, you can actually make a keyframe. Uh, you can crop, you can distort. I'm not going to be doing any, any of that today. We're just clicking on the reorientate so we can get our viewer to look at where we want to look. You can hear the fans going now because I'm not using any optimizer or proxy media. So this is taking up a lot of CPU on my Mac because uh, you can hear those fans starting to work now. So at this point, if you're ready to export or, or you've, you've added in your music and your effects and whatever you like, what you can then do is you can click on the share option. In our case, we're going to click on 1080. It's not going to exactly be in 1080. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to settings and then you're going to find the resolution that suits your player. Now, the interesting thing that you want to do here is you want to make sure that everything suits YouTube. You can actually go into YouTube and you can find the resolution that suits the YouTube player. Now, if you would like to see what resolution suit YouTube, you can actually go into support google.com YouTube forward slash answers and then you can actually find the resolution that will suit YouTube's player. Here are all the resolutions you can see them on screen now so if you don't want to look yourself uh, if you know it might be updated by the time that you've watched this video I do not know but that is where you find it if you want to search for yourself but down below you will see the resolution of what suit YouTube. So you have the 240, 360, 480, 720, 1080, 1440 and 2160 p and those are the resolutions that suit YouTube, that is what you would like to aim towards, uh, if you have this within your player uh, that is what you want to aim towards. So the closer you are to the aspect ratio the better and that is what I tend to advise to anybody who's going to be exporting 360 video for YouTube is the closer you are to that aspect ratio the better performing video that you will have on YouTube. Uh, so in this case what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go for 3840 1920 and that covers how you can get started with 360 video aka virtual reality video within Final Cut Pro 10. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If if you have give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button because we focus on three subjects here on my channel gaming editing and software but of course that they are very big niches and there is a lot that we cover and final cut pro 10 is definitely a subject that we have covered quite frequently here on my channel i'd love to see you in the next one thank you for watching